Hello and welcome to Sweet 301. We're coming to you live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we're here to talk about everything that Cold Club that's going on in the Cold Club sports world. Uh, you can watch all of our broadcasts on our Sweet 301 page, as well as our Facebook and YouTube channels. And remember to like our Facebook pages and follow all of our Twitter accounts for the latest news and media. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel for videos from around our leagues and to watch previous episodes of Sweet 301. Well, hey, Christian, it's, uh, it's only been two weeks since we've last I touched know. base, right? We're in season. We're trying to go bi-monthly with the show now, trying to give you more information since there's lots going on, tons going on. It's, yes. Uh, you blink and you miss something. So um, I think, you know, the hot topic in the, in the world of sports right now is the Final Four, March Madness. And uh, you know what? March Madness is upon the NCBBA as well, both on the men's and women's side. So why don't you ta- – you're, you're the guru on the men's yep. basketball side. Why don't you take us down the uh, the gamut of what's going on? Yeah, obviously a ton of things going on in uh, the men's side and the women's side. First, I want to get into the top 20 um, pool on the men's side. We have uh, Boston College has been the top team for the last, I would say, four or five uh, Phenom Elite top 20 pools. Um, Purdue also getting uh, some, some uh, first-place votes. Another really, really good team that, uh, you know, is qualified for regionals. So um, we have the new top 20 pool. It's actually calculated already. Um, I can uh, be a spoiler and say that Boston College does still remain the number one team in the land. Uh, we needed to get that top 20 out early because we do have uh, regionals uh, coming up this weekend. And the top 20 uh, results factored into the seeding for those events. Um but yeah, I mean, uh, we'll have the the, the Phenom Elite Week 22 Top 20 coming out this Thursday, so uh, be sure to check back to see where your team lands. Um, but getting into you know some season updates, the regular season concluded this uh, this past Saturday. Um, a lot of games were being played. A lot of we, we, I call it the makeup weekend, the last weekend of the regular season. At the beginning of the year, we kind of block it off, but uh, you know had a lot of games in that. That week, this past weekend, uh, obviously a lot of important basketball games and had the teams text me scores so that we could get uh, the standings updated as soon as possible. And it was like, you know, letter of intent day, you know, scores coming in and it was just exciting to watch and see how it affected things, eliminated teams, teams getting in. Um, So uh, it was an exciting weekend, but we officially concluded the regular season for the 2022 NCBBA men's and women's season. Um... So we have regionals coming up this week, and uh, all the brackets have been released. So let's take a look at those. Let's start with the uh, the Great Lakes Regional Tournament. Uh, You see the number one seed, Purdue, um, in there, and number two seed, uh, excuse me, yeah, Notre Dame. Um, Two really, really good teams that I'm excited to see, um, you know, how they perform. Um, But, yeah, a lot of exciting games to to be had there. But Purdue and Notre Dame um, are two teams that uh, I would expect to be in that championship. Um, Really impressive regular seasons, uh, spotless regular seasons in conference play. Um, So that should be a really exciting regional. That's going to be taking place at Bradley University at the uh, Mark and Family uh, Rec Center. So um, that's April 2nd and 3rd uh, opening round games and semifinal games taking place on Saturday. Championship game taking place on Sunday uh, at 1 p.m. local time. Um, the next, let's get into the Mid-Atlantic uh, four-team regional. You have uh, Radford University, the number one overall seed, uh, taking on Navy. And then you have Towson, the number two seed, taking on Virginia. Um, Four-teamer, basically uh, Mid-Atlantic North Conference winner taking on the Mid-Atlantic South runner-up. And then the Mid-Atlantic South Conference winner taking on the Mid-Atlantic North runner-up. So um, should be really exciting. You know, a lot of good teams there, too. Uh, Radford, uh, a new team to the program in the NCBBA. Um, I think finished 12, or excuse me, 13-1 and in conference. So really excited to see how they play. Um, Virginia a team that I got to see up at the fall tournament, really, really good team. Um, but that's going to be taking place actually on the campus of the university of Virginia at the Mark Fletcher, Fletcher gymnasium. That's taking place all on Saturday. It's just three games. Um, we have the opening round games, uh, and then the championship game also taking place on Saturday, moving on to the North Atlantic. We have that taking place at the Nittany Valley sports center and state college PA, which was home to the, uh, 
uh, fall tip-off that we hosted, uh, you see the number one overall seed, Penn State. Uh, not only the number one, but they got home court advantage. Um, TCNJ, the number two seed. Uh, and just a lot of lot of really good teams in this in this uh, in this uh, regional. So I'm really excited to see how this plays out. Uh, similar to the the Great Lakes, we have all the opening round games and the semifinal games taking place on Saturday, and the uh, championship game uh, taking place on Sunday. So um, really excited. Can't wait to uh, start getting the results for those this weekend. Moving on to the New England. Uh, I think this is the one regional to look out for. I mean, there's just some really, really high-quality teams in this region. Boston College, um, the number one overall team. Uh, but you have UConn, number two. Both these teams are, are uh, undefeated in conference play. Um, Quinnipiac, another solid team. Uh, Vermont, a team that won the fall tip-off uh, earlier this year. Uh Spent some time ranked at number one, right? Yes, they did. They were, uh, before BC, the number one team uh, in the country. Uh, also taking place in Northeastern. So there's some really good teams in this region. Um, obviously, only one team is going to come out victorious. But, um, you know, not trying to play favorites, but this one, um, this is uh, just a lot of hard-hitting teams, and I'm, I'm excited to see how this one plays out. Um, and then last but not least, the South Atlantic. This uh, is a one the South Atlantic South, which is Auburn and Florida State. Um, they had a small conference, but these are two really quality teams. Auburn, uh, especially, um, only losing one conference game to Florida State. Um, excited to see them play, and uh, UNC Wilmington, a, a new team to the NCBBA this year. Fantastic regular season, finished 12 and two. Um, they make their way in, and then you know an old uh, national champion, East Carolina University. Um, they make their, uh, they win the the South Atlantic North Conference. So that should be an exciting one too. All games played on Saturday. Um, we will, uh, as a league, try to have these brackets updated um, as much as possible. At the very least, we will have them updated at the end of each day so that you can see who is moving on to regionals and or to a championship uh, after Saturday night. And then on Sunday, we will have all five regional champions, and we will also have three. At large selections, that's something very important that I want teams to remember that are competing in these regional tournaments. That even if you do not win the regional, um, you're you know, aud you're auditioning. You're auditioning. Um, certainly, you know, making it to the championship game is a is a good first step. But you know, it's it's a whole resume that we'll be looking at, and um, you know, it's it's another opportunity that if you don't win the regional, you still have a shot at making the national championship tournament. So, we as a committee will be getting together Sunday night uh, to talk about who we think uh, the three best at large bids will will uh, be to go on to the 2022 NCBBA Men's National Championship at Gannon University in Erie, Pennsylvania, on April 22nd through the 24th. So. Excellent. Sounds fun. Yes. It was a fun weekend of basketball. Yes. Yeah, so we got the NCAA Final Four, but, uh, you know, the NCAA is almost wrapped up, but you got more brackets you can fill out. Uh, they are all available online to download, fill out, uh, have fun with it. So, um, yeah, exciting stuff. All right. How about uh, on the housekeeping end for men's basketball? Anything uh, those teams that are that are not focused on the playoffs should be uh, worried about? Yeah, certainly we're going to have the LPAs, uh, the renewal LPAs sent out uh, next week. Um, so teams need to be on the lookout for that. We want to give teams ample time to uh, get required signatures. Obviously a team president and faculty representative uh, need to sign off on those uh, participation agreements. So I um, want to give teams enough time to uh, track down their advisors to get their signatures. Uh, so be on the lookout for those. Those are very important. Those are basically your ticket to be a member in the NCBBA for uh, the 22-23 season. Um, we will be locking down a league meeting date. Um, we will be doing that uh, over uh, probably on Facebook Live, I believe, is where we'll be having that. That'll allow everybody from the comfort of their own home uh, in front of their computer screen to attend that event. Um, so we want to have as much participation as, a, as we can, uh, go over a lot of information and, and talk about rules and, and things like that. So we'll have a date for that set hopefully in the next couple of days. And once that's announced, invitations and things like that will be sent out. So look out for those things. And obviously, um, even if you're not in the regionals, please continue to follow along. 
uh, we will have everything updated on our regionals page and uh, our national championships page. So, outstanding. All Americans? Not yet. Those Not yet. those those will At, be that's probably a next next month uh, topic that we'll be talking. About. Okay, sounds good. So, uh, while while we're on the basketball front, let's move right on to women's basketball. Also, in the middle of their March app, uh, March Madness, heading into April Anarchy. Yes. Oh, I like it. You like that? Yeah. I mean, I've been spitting that out for a couple of years now. Nobody seemed to like it. So I'm glad. <laughs> not, to, not catching on? No, it's not catching on. Um, I got all these shirts made in the garage. No one's <laughs> buying them. <laughs> all right. So uh, where are we going to start on the uh, women's basketball side? We've got... We can uh, let's. Uh, we have a guest caller, but let's uh, let's get to Emma in a little bit. I want to talk, uh, kind of go through some things first um, before we get to Emma, the the vice president of Penn State Women's Club Basketball. But let's get into the top fifteen poll. Um, you have Penn State. We're excited to have Emma on. Uh, they are the uh, number one team in the land. Have been there since the start. Um, and I think I say this every month, but. Uh, I think they're well deserving of that number one uh, spot. Saw them compete uh, at the fall tournament and was really impressed with how talented of a team they are. So, um, next poll will be coming out uh, the following Thursday, not this Thursday, but uh, the next Thursday. Um, but yeah, also the the regular season has concluded for the women's. Um, and I know talking with Alec, who's uh, who's not able to join us today, uh, a lot of exciting things coming down to the wire. Um, I know he's still finalizing at this point a few of the regional brackets, um, but the ones that are finalized, let's get to, let's talk uh, New England regional. We have uh, Boston College taking on UMass, and then Fairfield taking on Northeastern, uh, just a straight f- uh, four-team regional tournament. Um, you know the the conference winner taking on the runner up of of the opposing conference uh, conferences uh, in that one. So that should be an exciting one. I see Boston College Northeastern in that one. Uh, both their men's are also in the New England regional. So uh, I'm sure the the club sports departments at those respective universities are pretty excited about that. Um, we also have the North Atlantic region, um, just a two teamer. It's a best of three. We have Syracuse taking on SUNY Cortland. Uh, and similarly, at, in the Pacific region, just a, a best of three, San Jose State taking on Cal Poly. And then finally, let's uh, move on to the South Atlantic. Uh, again, three-teamer, or excuse me, a, a best of three, Kennesaw State taking on Coastal Carolina. I know there are a few others that uh, are being finalized as we speak. Um, unfortunately, Alec is is uh, not feeling well. He's under the weather, so um, things kind of uh, are, are taking a little longer than, than expected. But at the same time, those will be released ASAP. Um, I do know, let's let's maybe get to, to Emma with uh, Penn State Women's Club Basketball. This is Vice President Emma, Emma Poirier. Um, Penn State has qualified for the regionals this year and uh, will be taking on Montclair State. So let's get uh, Emma on the line. How are you, Emma? Welcome to Sweet 301. Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me. A- Sorry, go ahead. No, absolutely. Uh, we appreciate you uh, are you joining us. Um, I've been speaking really highly of you uh, girls since the beginning of, uh, of the season. I got to, to watch you guys play uh, in the fall tournament up at State College, uh, you know, in your backyard. And I was really impressed with how talented of a team you were. You guys obviously won that uh, event, but championship game was a really hard-fought game against Ohio State. So just take us through your team this year. What uh, players to watch? How have you been able to become so successful this year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the fall tournament that you actually saw us watch, um, that wasn't even like our roster. That wasn't a lot of our seniors were gone that weekend. So we played with a lot of younger girls who are very talented. So we're super excited to be going into regionals with our seniors and get hopefully we can make it to nationals with them. Um, but aside from that, we do have a lot of good young girls that we just added to our roster this year because of COVID. We haven't really tryouts, any new girls on. Um, but aside from that, we have older girls with experience, and then we mesh really well with our younger girls, and we're hoping that we can just all come together and be successful this weekend. 
Awesome. I know you, you are, the bracket is. She was here last semester, but she's actually abroad in Ireland right now. But she's our strongest big, but so we're going to be missing her this weekend. But we do have some younger bigs. We got a little bit of a, a connection issue there. Um, not sure if you're in the library or not or, or where you are. It seems like the, the Internet connection might not be so crisp it looks like you've frozen on us but i think what you're saying is you know you know you've got this scouting report that montclair is a big team your your best big is over in ireland right now um but you got some young girls you think you can step up and take the challenge uh it'll be exciting to watch i mean and, and for those in attendance and uh uh hopefully you, we'll get to meet you up in uh in erie or whoever comes out of your regional in erie that's where i'll be over there on the women's side at the, the women's championship and just very excited about it. And, um, you know, the, one of the most, the biggest exciting things for me is, you know, two years ago, uh, I guess it was technically the 2020, 1920 season when we started the NCBBAW and just came out of the doors flying with so many teams on board. And then the, the season got shut down by COVID. Um, last year, nobody, indoor sports weren't cleared to resume. So there was no season last year. So this is our... This is the furthest we've gotten into a women's basketball season ever. The fact that we're talking about playoffs. So that's really exciting for me. Um, and you know, I just hope every, yep. everybody can appreciate uh, the return to play, the play, the chance to play championship basketball, compete for a chance to go to the championship, and, and someone's going to get to host that trophy uh, in, in April. Yeah. So. Absolutely, and sorry that uh, the, the the interview got cut short, but certainly keep an eye on Penn State. They are uh, a really, really good team, and, you know, it's kind of shocking to hear, you know, that the team that I saw wasn't even their full rostered team, so, um, you know, some other teams better be uh, put on notice because that's going to be a really tough team to, uh, to compete against because they were yeah. very, very good. So um, looking forward to it, and uh, – Good luck, Emma, this weekend against Montclair State. And, uh, you know, if you win that one against uh, the team you play in the championship game. So uh, be sure to, on the women's side, have those updated, brackets updated as, uh, as much as possible uh, this weekend. So make sure you're following along with those um, on the regionals page as well as the, uh, the national championship page. So um, look out for that. Housekeeping item, same thing on the women's side. You know, we... we getting out the uh, the LPAs for the upcoming year and, uh, you know, really looking forward to getting a date set in stone so we can get that out to the women's teams um, because we will have a separate league meeting for the women's league as well. And so. I'm very – I'm excited about that because, you know, again, we haven't completed a, a full season yet start to finish. I can't wait to get to the end and then meet with these girls and say – what did you like? What didn't you like? What do you want to improve upon? Um, we've had those discussions, but without you know really reading the whole book of a season, NCS, NCBBAW season, and uh, so I'm looking forward to that league meeting so that we can really get the yeah. uh, what kind of ideas they've got to to make the uh, 23 season you know even better. Yeah, and and to piggy up piggyback off that comment, the the league meetings are fully interactive. Um, you know, if you join us live. Um, you know, we have somebody uh, manning a, a comment section where you can ask questions live during the meeting. So that makes it really nice uh, for teams. And we discuss, yeah, what you like, what you don't like, what do you want to improve on, what do you want to put in the rule book, what do you want to take out. Uh, so once we get that day, we will be sure to let you know. But, yeah, certainly a, a very important meeting to attend um, for the future of the league. So that's all I got on the uh, the, the basketball side of things, but very exciting uh, weekend. I'm excited for it. I know the teams are excited for it and uh, should be a lot of fun. So um, I think we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. The game is the official headwear sponsor for Cold Club Sports. They offer our team's quality headwear such as hats, visors, boonies, and beanies for a great low price. All items are customizable to meet our team's needs. 
Contact Felicia.Battaglia at ColdClubSports.com for all of your headwear needs. Rawlings is the proud uniform, equipment, and ball sponsor of the National Club Baseball and Softball Associations. Teams receive up to 45% off on all their orders. For more information, including catalogs and price quotes, contact our front office today. All right, welcome back to Sweet 301. Thanks for joining us, sticking with us through the commercial break. And we're going to welcome to the set Jimmy Henderson, Director of Division II Baseball Operations. Jimmy, how you been? Doing well. How are you? How Good. was your trip back from Florida? Better than yours. It was. <laughs> yes, this wasn't hard to beat with... All the mishaps I had, but it's good to be back, and we have a nice recap here. I don't know if you want to go in a little about the facility, and I'll go in about some games that were played. Well, I think two weeks ago we, we chimed in with uh, you know, the spring training update, and it was uh, exciting to to be down there. Like the teams, I'm going through like the surveys now. Some of the teams have filled out, you know, what did they think of the event, and, and they're just going nuts about that facility is so much better and, than what we had previously, and the facility is awesome. All these fields, all these batting cages. The fact that it poured down rain and then two hours later we were back to playing again. Uh, things like that. They just, they, they loved it. They loved being by the beach. I mean, everybody's just hitting it up with, you know, there's suggestions. There's, there's, there's people suggesting we have a home run derby event one night or an all-star game one day. And uh, all kinds of interesting ideas are being thrown out there like what we could do next year to, to, to spice it up so we're going to take that all into account you know the teams have till the 15th of april to get their their surveys completed then we'll wrap that up and uh, uh really analyze it but i mean a lot of people were real excited about it and said count us in for next year that's what we like to see so yeah, yeah, that's great. We got a, a lot of baseball games in, navigated through a little bit of weather, but overall I thought it was a really good week. And if um, you think about it, it really was just a little bit of weather. It was usually like one day a week, one out of seven. Right. That's not bad. Yeah, and with the turf fields, we was able to get through it. Um, saw a lot of good games. I know you were able to catch some as well. Um, I got to see Virginia Tech and Penn State, and just a note on both of those guys, they're both definitely poised to get back in the postseason and, you know, get in the regional and maybe make a World Series. Um, they played each other where Virginia Tech came on top, came out on top with a 3 nothing win. Um, I saw almost all of that game very close the whole way. Um, Virginia Tech scored three early and just held on um, for the win. But two very good teams that got the show down. Um, Were you behind the plate during that game? Is that why you got to see it? You know, that is, that is yet to be told. <laughs> I'll let uh, the jury still out on that one. But... <laughs> It's a possibility. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I would imagine both those both those teams will be in the postseason. Um, on the D2 side, Cal U, our current number one team, went 4-0. Same idea. They look very good. They've actually already clinched their postseason spot by winning their conference. Um, they had a good showdown with Old Dominion, who I want to shout out as well. They're a, uh, a quote, new team. They've been with us in the past, but this is their first year back, and um, they look very well put together mm -hmm. to where they um, – Played Cal U, and I want to say 7-6. to six. It was a Cal U walk-off win. Um, That's good. The new team coming in, you know. A lot of times it takes a while to get, you know, the funds and organized enough to, to you know, get down to an event like that. So that's pretty cool that they – Oh, I thought ODU looked really good as a baseball team. And I, I really – one of the things I tipped my hat to was Michigan Flint. Like, that group, you know, they've been a, they've been a program for like six months. And the fact that they were able to put it together enough to have – I mean, they looked – I mean, their uniforms were spot on. You know, they looked great. And they were down there playing baseball, practicing, getting the work in. And I, I, I pulled that team aside at the end of the, the event and was like, hey, the fact you did this on your first year of existence, that is huge start. Now you're going to go – you're going to be able to talk to other people about this. You're going to get more guys on campus want to come play for you. And just the ball is rolling in your the way you want it to, so – Told them to keep their heads up. Don't worry about wins and losses right now. Just worry about enjoying the game, playing ball, and keep keep chugging along. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was very impressed with Old Dominion, just how well they were put together, the talent on the field, the you know off the field, how they acted, and everything. Um, so just want to give them a quick shout out. Um, what else? In week three, um, I was not present, but Antonio and Sandy were still down there, and I heard that Siena was the. Uh, the team down there that looked the best, and they went 4-0 with three of their wins coming against D1 teams. So shout-out to them as well. I know they're 
climb in the standings in the uh, New England region. Um, so look out for them in the postseason as well. Yeah, Sienna. They, they, <laughs> for that was a team that was a what, D3 team not too long ago, and they've just recently, I guess, moved up to D2. And they look like they're going to be scratching at the door to get into D1. But I think on the regional side, they're, they're in a little bit of a tough situation where they've already dropped two games to Cortland. So they need a little help. They can they don't control their own destiny for uh for regionals, I guess. So All right. Well, we'll have to see how that shakes out. Um in the spring training west side where Alec Verhoff um was running, I got some notes from him. He said uh California Miramar was very impressive. Um California Miramar Los Angeles, I guess I should say. But they went five and one out there with also beating a few D one teams. Um and had a good game with Metro State, who's a ranked D two team, where they came out on top against them. Um, and then UCLA at the Division One level went five and zero in Henderson, so he said that they hey, hey. looked very good as well. Um, moving on to the top twenty, the D one top twenty, Penn State made the biggest jump after their good spring training showing, um, jumping from fourteen to six, and Elon as well um, was noticeable where they uh, were not ranked for the first couple polls, but came in to um, snuck in at number twenty. And then in the most recent poll, they've moved up to 16, um, where I believe their record is 8-1. and one. So they've been chugging along and keep improving and winning games there. So quick shout-out to them. Um, Virginia Tech still holds down the number one spot, but it's getting a little closer, where University of Delaware is receiving some first-place votes, and there's only a six-total point difference there. Um, so I guess watch out, uh, Virginia Tech Hokies. They may be coming for the spot. Blue Hens. The Blue Hens, yeah. Coming for the Hoax. Um, in the three spot, you got the Fighting Warnalls. Yeah, yeah, Richie. Rich Warnalls always got his Grand Canyon crew prime for a World Series trip. Yeah, and moving on to the D2 poll, um, where I, I think Grand Canyon, their D2 team, is ranked as well there. Um, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but they're a good program as well. I know they're 6 uh, Well done, Jimmy. <laughs> I was just assuming they were. Um, but no huge jumps from the last – Last poll, we do have four new teams in it with Colorado State Pueblo, California Miramar, Stanford, and Penn State um, sneaking in from the last poll to this one. Um, Cal U still holds the top spot for the second poll in a row. And Ohio State, kind of the same idea. The gap is closing from the unanimous number one. We have a number two team who's receiving some first-place votes, um, and they're undefeated as well. And we saw them in spring training. They look like a very – Good club that was well put together and definitely going to be a postseason threat. One of the teams on this list, well, going to Penn State D2, they were impressive down in Florida. They hit a lot of home runs, that D2 team, Penn State's. They did. Uh, they hit some long balls. Uh, surprised Sienna's not hasn't made it in there. Maybe they'll creep into the next, the next poll. Yeah, we have the next one coming out this Thursday, so maybe okay. we'll see them up there. Yeah, I think they deserve it. After if I were games. a voter on the D2 panel, I'd definitely put Sienna in there based on what I saw down there. Yeah, we can make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but, yeah, just finished up the poll. Ohio State receiving a couple first-place votes. And uh, while well, University of North Dakota is at three, um, but also has been on, held the number one spot this year before Cal U took it over. Um, and, again, a new poll will come out this Thursday. Um, we'll be – Collected in the rest of our votes throughout the uh, today and tomorrow, and look be able to look out for the new poll on Thursday. All right, sounds good. Looking forward to it. Um, moving on to season updates um, in D one, nobody is clinched. Uh, I spoke with Eric Curator earlier today, and all the conferences are still wide open with a lot of games still to be played. Um, so just be on the lookout there for how things happen down the stretch with a lot of games left to happen, and all the spots are still up for grabs. Um, in D2, we've had one team clinch, and again, Cal U, hot topic on the uh, show today, but they have clinched the New Penn South, so they are regional bound. Um, but same idea the rest of the way. All the other conferences are still wide open. We do have one team in the uh, University of North Dakota who's a couple wins away, so they, they may be the next team to clinch a spot here. Nick um, Arnone stopping by the office the other day. Dropping off, dropping swag. off some swag that I didn't get. He was like, here, give this to Eric and Sandy. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> no, but he, 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 he felt bad and, and called me, but I said, no, I don't, I don't, uh, you don't need to do that. But it was a little bit of an awkward, yeah, yeah I'll make sure that they get these. Thanks. But yeah, I talked to him a little bit, you know, about how their season was going and they were playing Point Parks that night. They were playing Point Parks varsity team, I want to say, up at Pullman. 
Um, so seems like they're uh, they're rolling. So good for them. Nice. Yeah. What else is going on? Any housekeeping items? Housekeeping. Um, just stay up to date on the websites. Regionals and World Series pages are updated. Um, so any information you want or may need as far as you know fields, hotels, locations, stuff like that, the, the information is there. Um, so just go there and you'll be able to find it. Um, and then the only other thing I have is roster freeze April 15th. Um, you have up until that day to add any players, you know, provided they meet all academic and all eligibility requirements. But uh, you have until, what, a couple more weeks to get those players added on. And after that, that's a, it's a hard cut. It's a hard freeze. So once whatever your roster is at there, that's what you're rolling with the rest of the way. All right. Do you have uh, balls that you want to Juggle? I found out you you learned how to juggle while yeah, at spring training. I should have had that in the spring training updates. You know, a <laughs> little, little bit of free time here and there, and uh, taught myself how to juggle. So we might have a halftime. So not proud a half-time of you. I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Jimmy was a stud. Down, the whole staff were, were just stars down at spring training. But, I mean, Jimmy coming off the bench, working, umpiring 10 baseball games week one because we were short umps. Uh, he's great. He'd look at me with these eyes like, you need me to go put the gear on, don't you? <laughs> yeah. For four straight games, Jimmy. Hey. He did it with a smile on his face. And he learned and how to juggle. And he learned how to juggle. Which he came into my office to tell me that, which I was uh, kind of taken aback by, but I'm very proud of you. <laughs> you should be. Very I, proud. I also taught him the fine art of Jameson and red wine. Yeah. Well, we expanded his palate a little bit. You Good. know, after a couple 12-hour days, you got to yeah, yeah. take back somehow. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Jimmy. We appreciate you being on the show and giving us that update on spring training and all things baseball. Next up, we're going to roll right into the National Club Softball Association and welcome Lacey to the set. She's going to be uh, joining us here. Jimmy was just lingering. <laughs> yeah, he, was like, he didn't want it. He liked it so much. <laughs> he liked being on set so much he didn't want to leave. <laughs> he missed me after that last I week out so. in Florida. We were together. Huh? Uh, all right, so hey, there she is. Hi, Lisa. Lacey. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to the set. Uh, Lacey, what do you got for us on the uh, softball side? Let's start with top 20. Yeah, we can start with the top 20. So it just got released yesterday. Um, as per usual, for the last four months, we have the University of Delaware um, at number one. They received 11 first place votes this month. Um, you know, the first. Uh, the top three teams, Delaware, NC State, and Cincy, they've remained the same since uh, last month, February top 20. Um, also, Illinois remained number five um, for the March top 20 poll. Um, and we have two new teams that have joined this month. It will be Northern Arizona and the University of Pittsburgh. They have not been ranked before, but they found a spot in this month's top 20, so it's pretty exciting for them. All right. Yeah, not not too much shakeup other than those two climbing in. Mm-hmm. Any use of team, they made the that's pretty b- good ball club, if I recall. Mm-hmm. All right, good stuff. Yeah, we're kind of coming down to crunch time with you uh, as well with the, what regional uh, season updates and regionals coming down the pipeline here soon. Yeah, definitely. So regionals are right around the corner. Those are going to be happening um, for most conferences, um, April twenty third through the twenty fourth. Um, and then we have the Pacific happening April 30th through the 1st. So, All right. Yeah. Great. Do we have uh, – what teams have clinched thus far? So we have four teams so far. We have UConn, Illinois, Delaware, and Georgia. Um, also, for the teams that have clinched a spot, make sure that you uh, submit your form uh, the week after you receive it to your regional directors. So. Okay. What's, what form is that? Um, it's just the bid, the regional bid form. Oh, okay. So just accepting your position. And yep, just yeah. accepting it. Okay. All right. Anything else? Anything other exciting news going on with the, the season most recently? I know you were down in Florida for the softball side of swing in the spring, and I was down there the first week with uh, Grand Valley and uh, Xavier. Got to meet those two teams and, and see them play. Um, great – Two great squads uh, of character people, and uh, um, you know, enjoyed getting to talk to them quite a bit, and uh, you know, kind of deal with them. They, yeah, they're like, "How do we get more teams on here?" I'm like, <laughs> yeah. "Spread the word. Everybody you talk to, tell them you had a great time. Let them know how much fun it was. Let them know how much better it'd be if they came too." So they were all crunching their heads about, "Oh, this team's got our same spring break as us. This team's got the same spring break as us." So hopefully that the word spreads and we can grow that softball side just as big as the baseball side because we got the facility to handle it. Yeah, definitely. That's not an issue. Mm-hmm. 
So, um, yeah, the last little bit for softball. There's um, one little piece of housekeeping that I'd like to make an announcement is April 1st is the roster freeze deadline, so you can't add anyone after April 1st. So make sure you give me your academic eligibility forms, your regional directors, those forms by the end of this week. Yeah. April yeah. 1st is Friday, right? Yeah. It's a big deadline. And, Coming uh, quick. And it's a black and white deadline, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, some teams are like, oh, my, I forgot or my email wasn't working. It was stuck in my outbox. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So. Those are rules. <laughs> World's, World's smallest, smallest violin. 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 Oh, fiddle. Fiddle. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, Lacey. Well, hey, anything else to close up the softball side of things? I don't think so. Just good luck the rest of your season. And you're going to be publishing all kinds of updates as teams clinch, oh, as yeah, seating for regionals gets published, social media will go, yeah, go keep, nuts. Yeah, keep an eye on the website and on Instagram. Those are where we post um, a lot of our big announcements and stuff like that. So. All right, all right. And you got a new team this week, didn't you? Did you sign a new softball team? Yeah, I did. <laughs> what are they called? Um, uh, I can't remember right now because I'm in contact with a lot of new teams. But I had one. I had <laughs> one specific one as of right now. But Southern Illinois yep. Edwardsville. Uh huh. That's the new team. This the that's not the Salukis. That's the Cougars. Yeah. Cougars, They're new Cougars. to the NC, returning to the NCSA. I think they were involved before pre-COVID, pre-COVID, and now they're coming back for next year. So great! I think that's is that the seventh new team for this year, already signed on. Fifth, early? we have two or three more that are going to be signing up. Okay, great. Yeah. We'll look forward to those announcements as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap things up for this month's episode of Sweet Three Hundred One. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in, and uh, by all means, you can follow this. Uh, you watch us on Twitter, Facebook, and. Uh, our Sweet 301 channel. Yep. Next episode is going to be April 12th at 3.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook Live. Join us to catch up on up on everything going on around our Cold Club Sports Leagues. All right. Well, that's it. Remember, it's a game. Have fun. <laughs>